Hello everyone, my name is S Comic Maker, and today I'm going to show you how I made this brand new banner for my YouTube channel. Now a lot of the stuff that I do on my channel I draw myself, so if you are not an artist and you are trying to make a banner for your channel, there are ways that you can still make it by taking other images and copying and pasting and editing them into it, but this is just the way that I made my banner. So before I get started in showing you how I drew all this stuff and put it together, I am going to talk a little bit about how I set up the sizing for this banner. Now if you google YouTube banner and click on images, you'll find a template that looks kind of like this one right here. Now this template I've used before in my other banners but there's, I don't know if this is just me, um, if other people have had this problem using this template before, but for some reason the sizing that they require for this, they say that the sizing is uh, 2,560 uh, 2, by 1,440. So 2,560 by 1,440. Um, and I've tried to go to this size before and then put this template in on that size, and for some reason it's just skewed and it's not right and I had to play with it for a long time before I got a sizing that I thought felt or I felt fit inside of the banner so the size that I'm actually using um, let me pull this down just a little bit the size I'm using for mine is 2048 by 1152 and I'm working at 300 dpi and I took this image when I copied it and pasted it and it looks like this on my screen. <clears throat> if you're using Clip Studio Paint or you're using Photoshop, all you really have to do is scale it down so you can see that the image kind of fits outside the box here and then you can kind of scale it in and drag it to the appropriate size. <clears throat> and so then I use this as a base um, to help me out while I am working on my banner because what's going to happen with this is and I'm going to turn down the opacity so you can see. What's going to happen with this is your banner needs to fit inside just this middle part of the banner. So let me turn that back up all the way. So inside this first one, the darkest gray area, this is the size that's going to fit on your phone. So when you're thinking about what you want to do for your banner, you need to make sure that you have something that's going to fit from this, from this side all the way to the left, all the way to the right. But what's going to show on phones on mobile is this. In fact, here's a picture of what the banner looks like on my mobile device when I'm looking at it. So what I decided to do for mine, I actually thought of a couple different um, themes for this. Let me take some of this off. Boop, 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 boop. We'll leave me there. Um, when I was coming up with my sketch, here's the sketch for the first part. Then I also thought about, so I, I'm, I left a space here also for what I wanted to write in here, but I also did one that was like um, comic pages that were kind of flooding out like a hurricane, um, but it ended up getting too messy and too difficult to read. There were spaces that were going to be shaded in, like in these areas here, but I thought it would be more fun to have some things that I enjoy in my thumbnail, or in my banner. So I decided to do this design. Um, so kind of figure out what you want to do first. Make sure it fits inside. I'm going to turn this down low so you can see. Make sure it fits inside that first dark gray area. Um, and then the rest of it, you can kind of have it pull out. I've seen some people have their main stuff in the in that first dark gray area here, and then they'll have, um, so like I've seen, say that your channel has to do with video gaming, they'd have something very simple for here, and then they'd have things that are related to video games that they enjoy that kind of stretch out farther. Because what happens is with this longer part, the tablet mode or the desktop mode, when you look at it on a tablet, it's pretty self-explanatory. When you look at it, a tablet, that middle tone of gray is what people are going to see. And when you look at it on desktop, this longer part of gray is what you're going to see. So let's look at it on the desktop. So after I made mine on my desktop, this is what fits in there. 
but it's going to cut off at about around here on my mobile. If you need to see that image again, I'll put it up right here on the right side. And then I was actually able to use this banner on other things. So I used it on my Twitter page as well. Let's take a look at Twitter. The only difference with Twitter is that their banner sizes are bigger. So I was able to, with this extra space, this, this light gray that's on the top and bottom there, I was able to just fill it in with a color and so when I put it in there I was able to now on this one you can see um, different social medias that you can follow me on which I believe is more prevalent for me on Twitter to have than it is on YouTube <clears throat> so let's take a look at the drawing process behind how I made this banner so let's jump into that So I started off by being silly and drawing on my old banner and putting that up on my channel. Uh, this banner I made as a temporary solution. I've had it on there for maybe a month, maybe two months, uh, but I always knew that I was going to change it up so it wasn't going to stay there for very long until I was able to make my new banner. So I started off with creating a new layer and outlining where the banner is going to be by separating what's going to be shown on mobile devices and then having it stretch out so I knew where I should be drawing as far as what's going to be seen on mobile and what's going to be seen on desktops and tablets. For the drawing, I knew that for my persona that I wanted to have myself kind of being excited, jumping up, excited for my channel, but at the beginning, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to have as the background. So I figured that I would just start off by drawing the stuff that I knew that I wanted to have and then do a couple different sketches on possibilities for the background and then go from there. As I said before, the first idea that I had was to have a bunch of comic pages kind of floating out. When I originally made this channel, my old banner was me drawing and stacks of paper were just flying everywhere with comic pages drawn on them. So I was going to do something similar, but I realized after I did the sketch that even after I kind of fill in the background with color and draw different comic pages on all of these pieces of paper that it was just going to end up being too busy and it might distract from the words that I needed to have on there. Uh, so I decided that I would keep track of this one hold on to it for right now but I needed to come up with something different too just to see what my options were so my second idea was to kind of have stuff about me things that I like things that I use on a daily basis so I decided to have kind of a mixture of technology and art supplies so I have some video game things like playing games on my computer so I have my keyboard and I have a mouse and I have headphones uh, and then I have my switch and I have a 3ds on there and a controller and some wires kind of coming in and out and then of course because this is an art channel I also included different art supplies so I had some paint and some paint brushes and Copic markers and some pencils and pens now what's good about having kind of a simple background like this is that you really don't need to focus on making it absolutely beautiful and perfect. So when I did the line art for this drawing, I kind of just made sure that as long as it's readable as the item that it's okay. If you, I spent so much time just making sure that the background was absolutely perfect, then I would have been there for 1000 years. <laughs> At first I was also considering trying to color in all of the items separately, uh, but then I just thought that it would distract from myself and that I would make my character pop out more and as you'll see later the little banana man that I draw um, that having just those two things colored in and then having everything else kind of the same color scheme it made those stand out more but also made it look still pretty detailed so I kind of like the way that this one came out to actually keep with the color scheme as well I actually line all of the items with like a deep dark red and then I knew that I was going to have the colors that were sitting behind the items be all red. And then I was going to have kind of like a transparent white that went over it, which when you mix red and white together, it makes pink um, go on top of the item. So that's kind of how they ended up pink. Uh, and typically, I'm not much of a pink person, but I actually really, really 
like the way that it looks. It, they all kind of fit together pretty nice. If you are making your own banner and you're not necessarily an artist and you're taking found images, it's still pretty much similar uh, to what I did here. The only difference with mine is that I drew my stuff myself. I just made sure that I had everything on separate layers. Now when you're copying and pasting things into your banner, they're going to make them separate layers anyway, but you want to make sure that you have them all separate just in case you mess up on something and it's not all on the same layer and you panic because boy have I done that before. Um, but I actually ended up taking the words that I used from my last banner for this one. So that one was pretty easy, but what I would suggest for the words is to go online and look for some free fonts to use in your banner because a lot of the default fonts that we have on our computers are not the best kind of fonts. Um, and so I think that it would really add some more to your channel if you looked at some cool free fonts online, downloaded them, put them in your font folder on your computer, and then um, tried to use them in your banner. And there are tons of really simple, really great tutorials online that can show you how to add font or new fonts to your computer. You can also see that when I start to color that dark red background in there, that originally I had it as like a very bright red, but I decided to kind of mute it. I didn't want any bright colors competing with the characters that I had on there. And I think that was probably the best choice because with how soft the background is, I really do think that the characters that I drew kind of stand out much more. Then at the end, as you saw earlier, I made kind of a separate alternate banner that I used for my Twitter account. And for this one, I always have um, little pictures of different social medias that I'm on saved into my computer so that whenever I need to use them, I can just pull them out as needed. And so I grabbed them from my computer, but you can literally just Google the logos for any kind of social media that you use and copy them and paste them in there. And so I kind of set them all up on the bottom and put the words follow me next to it and kind of put a little drop shadow behind there and added them to my banner. I also debated adding a little shadow that goes behind me, but then I really thought because my line art is the darkest thing on there, because my line art in my character is black, that it wasn't really necessary. But I use a drop shadow a lot for my artwork. And I'm going to show you real quick how I did it because I was just explaining it in audio and then I realized that it's not going to make any sense unless you see it. So um, I'll show you really quick. So if you can see right here as my social media are blinking what I usually do is after I added all of my little social media icons I went to layer and then I made sure that all of the layers are on top of each other so say that this layer 17 is my YouTube one and then the one below it is Instagram and then the one below it is Twitter and so on and so on what I would do is make sure that they're all next to each other and then I would click on layer and then merge with layer below once I have all of my little icons merged together, I have them looking like this, so that they're all on one. In fact, when you hit your little grabby tool here, the move layer, and then you can move it like that. But anyway, what I do for drop shadow, and I do have to edit a little bit more sometimes um, because say for example, I was doing a drop shadow on my character here. See this little bit where her arm um, and her shirt, there's like a little hole there. I would have to go in and make sure that that part's erased when I fill this in, but let me show you what I mean. So this layer, I am on layer 17, which normally I'll, I'll usually I name my layers, but I was just kind of like in the zone working on this, so I didn't. But for the sake of you guys, I'll make sure that I have it in there, so I'll put logos. And what I will do is I do a new layer and I make sure it's below the logos because we want our shadow behind them so it needs to be beneath and then what I'll do is I'll click on the logo layer again I will click the auto select tool I will select my screen now because on this layer the only thing that's there are the logos but what happens when you click outside of them is that it's going to select everything that's outside of your logos. 
Now if I click on the YouTube logo here, because I clicked on that red, it's only selecting the red. It's not even selecting the little um, white arrow there. So you want to make sure that you click outside of them, because then if you look, it's got all of them. It looks like it's around all of them. But here's the thing. If I go ahead and go, okay, I want something that's darker than this red right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use um, my pen tool here and I'm going to start filling it in. And they're like, oh wait, it's behind it, but how do I make it so that it's the same shape as these right here? So what I do is I will actually, once, there's, once you click the outside of them, if you go to selection and then invert selected area, it only selects what is in here. Now here's the here's another tricky part. You now need to go back to that layer that you just made. In fact, we're gonna name that layer shadow so we don't get confused. And after I click on, on that one, now I'm on the layer that's below logos, it's our shadow layer. I'm gonna then go ahead and take my tool here, my pen tool, and I'm gonna take that dark red and I'm gonna kind of fill in here. But we don't see it, do we? Well, it's there, I promise you. In fact, if we get rid of logos, see we've kind of filled in the shapes of them. If I deselect it, you can kind of see a little ring of the red around the Twitter icon there. But what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go back to my move layer tool, and on our shadow layer, we're still clicked on the shadow layer, I'm going to grab it and I'm gonna drag it down to the left a little bit. If you have it where your light source is to the right, you might want it this way but I kind of like them when they kind of go to the left, especially because I like seeing the little Twitter wings of the bird there. So I will have it go downwards to the left a little bit. And it's a way to make your icons pop just a little bit more. You can have it where they're not there if you don't want to have them like that, but I feel like by having it, it makes them stand out just a tiny bit more. And if you feel like it doesn't, then you can go back into it. I just went and made the red that we were using a little bit darker. I can go back in behind it and make them a little bit darker if I feel like it's not quite popping out as much as I want it to. And you can do that for anything. That's how you do that part. <laughs> so I hope that helps. So that's it for me this week. I hope that this tutorial helped you out if you're interested in making your own banners or if you're an artist that likes to do a little bit more um, and similar to this, then I hope that this also helped you out. If there's anything that you were confused about or you have any questions about, please make sure to leave a comment down below. And then as I get questions, I will make sure that I add those questions and answers in the description of this video. So if there's something that maybe I missed, go ahead and check in the description. Or if I didn't answer your question, leave it down below and I'll make sure to answer it and then add it into the description of this video as well. As always, videos like this are possible because of my patrons, so thank you so, so much for all your support. I appreciate you all stopping by, and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye, guys.